Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a wonderful time, whatever time of year it is for you. For here, we are in the winter, it is dry and it is windy and we've started into the fire season. So, but the main reason for the video today is I finally did it. I took a vacation and went to Peru, went with my good friend Santiago he was my tour guide and he did an absolutely wonderful job. It's well worth it. We went early one morning. It only took us about four hours to get to the border. Um, we had no issues getting across the border. You do need your passport, whether you're a citizen of Ecuador or not. They are requiring passports now but no issues getting through the border. I did take my car and we had to register the car to get it into the system, but no, no issues there whatsoever. We left there and continued on through to Piura and we stayed at the, uh, at the Wyndham Hotel in Piura for a couple of days while we checked out the various little towns nearby and while I could get some new tires put on my car because my tires were getting pretty bald and so that was my big excuse to have to go to Peru so I could get tires on my car and while I'm there take a vacation. So that's what I did. So I absolutely loved it. We had an absolutely wonderful time. Um, every day we did something different. My son asked me when we got back what was your favorite part and I had to really think about it. And I said, you know, my favorite part was the fact that every day was a new adventure. Every day we went somewhere different. We saw something different. We saw a different piece of the culture. Um, I did not have a lot of expectations in mind when I went. Um, just wanted to soak it up and see, uh, check out the culture and just see what Peru had to offer. And it was wonderful. Day one, we went to Catacaus. It is the center of an area with the expertise in gold and silver metalworking. Um, but it's also more famous for straw items, straw hats, um, bowls, fans, just purses, anything made that they can make out of straw. Um, some a lot more decorative than others, but very impressive. Overall, I would say the artisan work in that area is really nice. Walking through, we took the, the taxi, a shared taxi, and walked through town in the market area. And they have things made out of wood, things made out of ceramic, things made out of straw. A lot of variation, a lot of really impressive stuff. Uh, so it's worth, if you go to that area, it's worth going to see. They had, one of, one of my things that got away, they had a nativity scene that was, uh, for me, it was really impressive. I could have packed that up and brought it home, but I didn't know, that was day one. I didn't know how much we would be running around or how long I would have to carry it if, if I chose to buy it at that point. So we walked all the way through the marketplace and on the way through the marketplace, we found this little door open, very unassuming. And inside the door um, was a, a replica, a wooden replica of a church. And it's very distinctive. And I thought, well, you know, that's, that's a replica of the church that we passed on the way in. Quite impressive. And so it has up on the on the side, they have these little figurines, these people. And I'm not quite sure if it's the 12 disciples or if it's saints or, you know, quite what it is, but um, it was very impressive nonetheless. So, anyhow, that was um, the initial part of the trip. We walked all through the market and really enjoyed all the different things that were available. When you look at market, place items here in Vilcabamba in, in Ecuador, you kind of see all the same stuff. Each little town has a market and each market has kind of the same stuff. Um, when, once we get to Peru, it was 
I'm going to say none of the same stuff. They still have a lot of jewelry making, but it's different. Um, ceramics and wood making things and stuff like that. It's just all different. Um, I think the, the artisans in Peru are very talented. I mean, we saw some, some beautiful things and it didn't all look like commercialized manufactured things. Um, there was some stuff, I mean, there was some commercialized, but some of it looked very unique. And there was a guy that was on the side and he literally is sitting there painting and you can buy some of his paintings right there on the street. Um, and he's, he's pretty good. I just beautiful, beautiful color and, and artwork and everything. So we made our way all the way through town and then we found, um, a moto taxi guy and so he, in Peru, they have all these little moto taxis, these little tuk-tuks. So you can sit two people, though in Cologne, we got three people back there, but it was tight. Um, and he drove us. He was really good. So he knew we wanted to take pictures of stuff and everything. So he, he always was trying to find a, a route that had... A lot of things that we could take pictures of and he did an absolutely wonderful job he was a wonderful wonderful taxi driver so we went through towards a museum so we heard that there was a museum so he was taking us to the museum but he was taking us kind of on a scenic tour and we went through an area that had a lot of agriculture and in the area of the agriculture there was this um, field and they were taking their livestock through the goats and, and donkeys and stuff and then you could see where they were um, gardening they were putting in their fields and putting in their food crops but not in the traditional way they had an old plow and horse and the man was out there plowing the field um, with no mechanics whatsoever and then of course there was a lady um, that drove by on a horse and buggy cart and it was just it was adorable to see all of this it was like being thrown back in time and then of course there's these two pillars on the side of the road and basically that's the entrance into this this other area called the Naharala um, site museum so we went to the the main goal was to get to this museum um, Naharala site museum it was literally a very small museum but it's an archaeological dig site which was impressive I've seen some pictures online that in the beginning probably many years ago um, this site was very very impressive uh, since then, there's been a lot of erosion. They've come in and added um, a roof over a lot of it, um, just trying to keep it out of the elements so it doesn't just blow away in the wind. But the site is impressive and it's worth going to see. Um, Naharala was the capital of the pre-Incan Tayan culture and is one of the premier archaeological sites around Pura covering six hectares just south of Catacaos is centered in a fairly well-preserved adobe fortress. The site of the Naharali people who lived between the year 900 and 1400, it was a matriarchal society and practiced animal sacrifices. The ruins have been degraded by erosion and being conquered over time but you can still see the altar in the main court. After the fact, as they got conquered, one of the things the Spanish Catholic Church did was come in and build a church on top of this archaeological site. They not only built it on top of the archaeological site, they actually built it on top of a graveyard. That to me is bad juju. I'm sorry. You shouldn't build your church on top of a graveyard that's that's not good so anyhow they did it was an impressive church for that time um, however then an earthquake came and the floor of 
the church. The church, the structure is still standing, but the floor of that church literally collapsed into the graveyard. I'm telling you, bad juju. So anyhow, the Tayan Nation was perhaps the first civilization in the northern Peruvian region of Pura and controlled the area between the rivers and the coast. Their society was matriarchal, where the men would do the work and the women would make the decisions. I have a friend, and she said, that's kind of interesting, but taking care of one man is difficult enough. Adding multiple men, that, that would be just very difficult to manage. Okay, I get the point. However, these ladies figured out how to make it all work for them, but they had their own gods and their own distinct language and customs. They had an economy based on fishing, farming, artesian making of things, and monumental temples of adobe and a system of aqueducts that create fertile farmland. And a, the area in Pura is basically a giant desert. So when you see green stuff growing, really need to appreciate the fact that they live in a desert and they manage their water well. The Tayanis were eventually conquered by the Moche and the Chimu who came after them and then of course by the Incans. The Tayan culture compared to other ancient Peruvian civilizations was much smaller. The Tayan culture was located between Pura and Tumbas and extended to the Gulf of Guayaquil in Ecuador. Perhaps it was the first culture to populate this territory. The Tayanis people managed to produce corn as their main product and cotton as a product that they used for their industry. Since cotton cultivation was of great importance among the economic activity of the Tayanis, this was the product of raw material for elaboration of threads which were used in the making of fabrics for common use. Another important characteristic if we talk about the Tayan culture is that they also planted fruit trees such as guava, cucumber, and avocado and of various varieties. All these species of fruit trees last until today and continue to benefit everyone here. The Tayan culture was very privileged in terms of fishing with an extensive sea with many rivers and streams that allowed them to carry out this activity so fundamental and essential for their livelihoods. The characteristic fish of the region that inhabited, they inhabited were mackerel, trout, catfish, among others. To catch these fish, they used nets and small rafts that were appropriate to carry out this activity. Their main livestock was the llama, the animal of the Andes and that once domesticated gave great satisfaction to the population. These animals provided their ability to carry a large load over a long distance. The meat of these animals was also used in food. They are also well known for their architecture. They built beautiful temples in the land. They also worshiped the sun and deity imposed by the Incas and their stone idols, which they called Guantan. This name primarily identified one of their deities that featured the whirlpool of wind and dust. It can also be seen in Tayan ceramics are linked to Chimu and Incan cultures. However, it maintains certain manifestations of its own, such as molding vessels with pallets and dyeing with smoke and ceramics that present iconographic decorations of the Chimu. While we were there, um, after seeing the, the archaeological dig site, we also went through and saw a little tienda that had amazing woven products. Now at the, at the entrance of the uh, museum, there were little ladies out there um, weaving hats and baskets and everything. But we did go by a little store as well where she had all kinds of stuff, baskets, hats, 
um, fans, just anything you can imagine that they can weave. These are not just brown woven straw pieces. They're very elaborate with color. Um, so anyhow, enjoy the pictures and our day one adventure. See you next time for day two. Mm -hmm.